Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the Middle Eocene, the Chubut province of Argentina was somewhat milder in climate than might be expected for this time period. Paleoflora recovered from the region suggest a temperate rainforest biome, perhaps roughly comparable to the Pacific Northwest of the USA today, or the wetter parts of New Zealand. These conditions appear to have favoured slightly different animal groups from the more tropical forest environments found across the northern half of the continent. Titanosaurs, for example, have rarely been recovered here, while smaller ornithischians and hadrosaurs appear in great abundance. Notosuchians were also rather rare, with only small-bodied taxa being present. The reasons for this disparity are still being investigated, but it is likely that the cooler climate functioned as a barrier to certain animals that were less tolerant of milder climes. A wide variety of animals clearly thrived in these conditions. Leading in terms of sheer numbers were the mammals, in particular metatherians. Although known mostly from teeth and fragmentary mandibles, the sheer amount of metatherians present here is rather remarkable. At just this one site we have carnivorous sporacidonts, arboreal omnivores, tiny shrew-like insectivores, and gnawing herbivores. The first unquestionable remains attributed to marsupials have also been found here, which bear a close resemblance to the didelphoids and the monito del monte of our earth. In addition to this, dryolestoids were quite common and seemed to have been adopting a more terrestrial mode of life than the metatheriums, which were mostly arboreal. In the overhanging trees, we can see three metatherians. The first is the brush-tail possum-like gnawing herbivore Brita dolops. This animal has a long prehensile tail and tawny brown fur. The second is the basal omnivorous marsupial Argentadelphis, which strongly resembles a modern opossum. And the last is the tiny arboreal viridogale, an insectivore similar to modern small dasurids, and is, incidentally, very cute. Some of these animals were rather large for alter earth mammals, the largest of which were omnivores slash herbivores the size of wombats or medium sized dogs. These animals appear to have lived alongside small ornithopods with minimal competition, which may be due to different dietary requirements. The mesongulatoids tended to be generalists, leading lives similar to the early ungulates and pigs of our earth. The ornithopods, meanwhile, were more exclusively herbivorous. Eutherians were present here as well, represented by some arboreal herbivorous chimolestans and a smattering of atlantogenatan placentals, almost all of which were small generalists or insectivores. In the scene in front of us, a few small mammals forage on the moist forest floor. There is the hamster-like gondwanothere Zastylodon, the long-tailed hyrax-like mesongulatoid Patago hyrax, and the basal atlantogenatan placental Salagale, a rat-sized scratch-digging insectivore. Dinosaurs are also common and diverse here. Most of these were ornithischians of one sort or another, with titanosaurs and theropods being rather rare. Perhaps the most important element of the dinosaur fauna at Canyadon Vaca were the elasmarian ornithopods. These herbivores tended to be on the smaller end of the size spectrum, generally ranging from 2 to 7 metres in length. This enabled elasmarians to avoid competition with the much larger notohadrosaurine hadrosaurs, which seemed to take the place of titanosaurs in southern South America and Antarctica at this time. Importantly, the elasmarians found here show quite a few signs of an extensive radiation not repeated at fossil sites further to the north. While quite a few were small, speedy bipeds, others were moving toward an almost ankylosaur or stegosaur-like lifestyle. In the scene in front of us, a group of three mimosa cambrensis, two metre long slender animals covered in a simple coat of fluffy protofeathers and fast runners, a three metre long semi-bipedal fontanosaurus walks nearby. This animal is quite bulky, with its back and tail covered with a smattering of osteoderms. A stocky, short-tailed Rawsonia is biting some rotten wood off a log. This animal is only two metres long, with an unusually heavy skull and a sharp beak. It is bipedal and vaguely resembles a basal ceratopsian in appearance. 
Hadrosaurs, for the most part, were similar to their cousins from the Northern Hemisphere, with a few genera reaching enormous sizes. Theropod remains at the site are scrappy and poorly preserved, with only three genera having been described thus far. Two of these were omnivorous Notoraptorans, a troodontid descendants originally from North America, while the third was a 9 meter long Megaraptoran. Interestingly, no medium-sized predatory theropods have been recovered. Abelisaurs were completely absent, as were the dromaeosaurs that we would expect to find filling this niche elsewhere in the world. The reasons for this are not certain, but in their place, it seems that small notosuchians were starting to fill in this ecological gap. These quadrupedal, long-legged mesotherms would later become the dominant mid-sized predators across the whole continent during the later Oligocene, but during the Eocene remained rather small, up to 3 metres in length. Thus far, no avialan fossils have been recovered here. The same also applies for lizards, eusuchians and pterosaurs. In fact, the only non-archosaurian reptile from Canyadon Vaca was a matzoid snake known only from a single vertebra. Judging from its size, the length of the entire animal has been extrapolated at 3.5 meters. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering another unusual animal, the insectivorous aardwolf of southern and eastern Africa. See you again soon. Cheerio.